What's up, everybody? It's the K-Pop Kimchi Podcast, where we love the spicy kimchi, and we also love the spicy K-Pop takes. I am your host, Justin Turneau, with my co-host, Brian Limper. Dude, we made it to episode number two. Dose. Episode dose. Episode dose. I didn't think we'd make it this far, but if anyone is coming back and listening, you are a saint, and we love you. You're the best. And if this you're the is real any, MVP. You're the real MVP, and if this is anybody's first time listening, welcome to our beautiful K-pop podcast. We're the K-pop bros, and yeah, we're going to talk about some K-pop, dude. But first off, how, how are you doing, man? What's going on? Doing pretty good. Just got our normal... 12 o'clock a.m. Uh, recording session going on here. So. Yeah, last week it was 12.05. It's 12.02 now, so we're a little ahead of schedule. So I'd say that's that's pretty good. Getting a jump on it. Getting a jump on it. Yeah, it's just the, the graveyard shift, man. It's really when we when we thrive in our podcasting. It's true. This is when I feel the most alive. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so today was a special episode. We said it last week. We were going to go over each of our personal top five comebacks of the year so far. So, <laughs> dude, how are we How are we going to break it down? Are we going to start with one or five, or how are we going to do it? Well, before we get into that, okay. I just want to ask you. I'm just jumping the gun. I'm sorry. How is, or not how, but what is going on in your K-pop world right now? Like, what's some new K-pop stuff that you've discovered or anything you'd like to share with the audience? Oh, good, good question. Um, let me think. Well, honestly, about an hour ago, I watched Twice's Feel Special uh, dance practice video. That came out, and honestly, it might be my favorite dance practice video of all time. It was so good. They are all so talented. All the members are so, like, just so powerful, and watching them dance and do their thing, and they all look awesome, and that was really fun. So, that was a very big K-pop moment in my week, was watching twice as twice as a uh, dance practice video um one other thing is i bought a lot of momo photo cards this week because i'm trying to collect all of her album ones and it's you know it's tough but someone's got to do it and i bought a lot this week so i'm i'm pr- i don't know if i'm proud of it but i'm excited for them to come in the mail <laughs> hey you gotta be excited about something it's true man it's true what about you what's going on in your k-pop life well I'm currently really obsessed with Produce 48, and I know it's been over for a while, but it is uh, my favorite thing in the whole world right now. I can't wait to see who makes it into the uh, final group. I hope no one spoils that for me. I'm on, like, episode four, so I got a couple more to go, but, uh, yeah, it's super great. I'm going to be really disappointed when a lot of these girls get eliminated. (laughs) It's really sad because, well, we watched You Came back in town this last weekend and we watched it and it's so good it is the most amazing show of all time we were like glued to the tv and they're super long episodes aren't they like two and a half hours long yeah something like two two and a half hours long i literally watched like episode one probably seven or eight times like it's so great yeah it's it's crazy and we watched it and i was so glued to the screen and i kept thinking like wait a minute i can just look at eyes one's profile and see who made it but since we weren't necessarily huge fans of them, like we might know one or two members, but we really don't know the rest of them. So watching the show is almost like a brand new experience for us because we don't necessarily know who moved on. I already know once the first cuts come up in episode five, I'm just going to be devastated. <laughs> like I'm going to, I'll probably cry. I'm not even going to lie. I'll probably cry. It's going to be so sad. It's such a show that you need to be invested in. I I can't just sit down and be like, oh, I'm going to watch about 20 minutes or so of Produce 48. I need to be sitting there. Wow, that's really awesome. But I need to be sitting there, like, watching from the start to the to the end. If I had more hours in the day, I'd just rewatch episode one multiple times and then finish the rest of the show. The best part of episode one was all the the um contestants i guess getting introduced yeah just the group introductions were great and then everyone's like freaking out and they didn't know like the girls in the stands were just as surprised as we were it was awesome yeah it's it's fun so if you have not watched produce 48 yet which formed now eyes one you should watch it because which has been a group for more than a year more than a year 
we're a little late, we know, but we're still repping Produce 48 because it's a kick-ass show, and I can't wait to finish it. <laughs> Honestly, by the time we finish it, they're probably not going to be a group anymore. No, yeah, they'll probably already have the new one. We'll just keep being behind. Like, every new Produce group will be the season behind. Yeah, but Produce 48 is where it's at. If you haven't seen it, I suggest checking it out because it's awesome. Next pro- I- Whatever the next one is, dude, we're we're watching it. At like live as it goes, I'm uh, gonna finish learning Hangul just so I can understand what they're saying without subtitles, so I can vote in the next one when it comes out. I just want to vote. The voting looks so cool. It's so intense. There's like a countdown timer for when you can vote when voting ends. And then like people get yelled at and they're crying and it's just super sad. There's so I'm much crying sad. on that show. I can't. Uh, it's tough sometimes because I swear things are going great and then someone's bawling their eyes out. Also. Shout out to Sakura and the rest of the Japanese trainees. Like, they really worked hard. Even if you didn't make it in the group, girls, you worked really hard. I was very impressed with your work ethic. They did, and I felt bad for them because... They're kind of at a disadvantage to begin with, but what you going to do? Yeah, because when they came in to the, the show, like, it's one thing for some of the Korean contestants that were just not good at performing and everything and getting trashed by the judges. But for the Japanese ones, like, it's just cultural differences in how they perform and what they do. So the Japanese members might not be the best at dancing or singing while performing. It's just, like, a completely different type of entertainment. So when they were yeah, getting, the, the getting trashed, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when, like, the when they were getting trashed by the judges because they were so bad, I was, like, tearing up on the inside. Yeah, so I'm currently obsessed with the Produce 48. Um, can't wait to see how it ends. There's going to be a lot of tears shed. So I guess if you want to message me talking about Produce 48, <laughs> don't give me any spoilers because I don't want to know who wins. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> don't ruin it for me. Don't ruin what happens in this show that's been done for over a year. Even though I like, follow their personal accounts, I see pictures of the winners all the time. I still oh, I want know. it to be a surprise. I know. It'll still be it'll still feel special. It'll still feel special. Gosh. I can't wait. It's gonna be so oh man. I'm just getting excited. Who's your about favorite it. person so far? Uh produce forty eight? Yeah. Um I really like uh Sakura, she's cool. Jarina's really cool. Um she's just so lively and happy. Um Yoon B, which actually is my favorite member of uh Eyes one, so I mean, well, that's congrats, kinda... man. She made she made it through the gauntlet. She she Dude, passed. Dude, don't the ruin test. it for me. <laughs> I'm don't sorry. I won't spoil ruin anymore. It for me. I won't spoil anymore. <laughs> uh, Yunche, she's pretty cool. Um, there's actually a bunch of them that are really cool. Member, me- uh, a bunch of members that are really cool, but yeah. I already know that a bunch of them aren't gonna make it. So I'm gonna be super depressed. Right. Just gotta prepare for the sadness, man. I know, but yeah, I'll finish it eventually. Hopefully. It's true. Anyways. It's true. Back to the- <laughs> yeah. We can get... So that's that's what's that's going on in our, our K-pop... Yeah, we can ha- talk about that so much more. But that's what's going on in our K-pop lives after oh, last week's... Note. Oh, another side note. What's up? Side note. Side I note. I spent uh, an incredibly hefty amount of money on some CLC photo cards. It's about so. damn time, dude. Honestly. Uh, like, you've always talked about buying them, and now you never did. Yeah, so that happened. Um, Good. Good. Probably paid more than I should have, but uh, what were they? They were like uh, special. They were broadcast cards, broadcast and cards. they were signed by the members, or Sungi's so, was signed, I think. Guess and it was she, worth it. Yeah, that's super exclusive, and the broadcast cards are cards you get at the broadcast when they go on TV, so they are very exclusive, and you can't just get those anywhere. And now I... Not buyer's remorse. Um, nope. Not at all, dude. You're excited. <laughs> I'm sure I'll feel way better when they actually get here. <laughs> it's true. It's true. That's awesome, though. We'll, once you get them, we'll, we'll talk about them and see how awesome they are in person. Okay. Now back to the topic. Back to the, the, the show. What our plan for this show was we are going to talk about our top five comebacks that have happened so far in 2019. And you, you explain the order because I keep forgetting. We're going to basically count down. We're going to alternate and go from five 
to one. But before we get to the number one, we'll give a couple honorable mentions that just were good but just didn't make the top five. Because they all can't be winners. Respect. They can't all be winners. And I've always just said kidding. this. They're all winners in my book. I've never heard a bad K-pop song, but they can't all be in the top five of the 2019 comebacks. So you you were right. We got we to gotta pick five. And we're here now, so you kick it I off. Mean, honestly, if I would have given a real rating, it'd be the number one song, which I feel like everybody probably knows we're, if you listen to the last we're episode. We're going to get to one. It may uh, be a surprise. If you haven't listened to last week's episode, it'll be a surprise. If you did happen to listen to last week, it's not going to be a surprise, but we're not no, sorry. You, you, because you already know. <laughs> it's the best song ever, but we're starting at five. You go uh, first. My number five. Oh, and sorry, we don't know each other's five here, so it is brand new to all of us in this, I mean, we in actually, this situation we talk about it our like favorite songs to each other all the time like literally every day so it probably be too big of a surprise but we actually haven't given each other the list yet so. the only one we know is number one because we both just know we're gonna have the same one so yeah okay well okay five sorry my number five is all night by astro Okay, I, that I, that I is. Don't even know if you've heard that. Song. I don't know if I've heard that song. I don't know if I I have, but I'm gonna have to after this. When when did that come out? I I don't know if I've heard of that song. Actually, let me look it up for you real fast. This is a song that one of our friends showed me. Cause like I said last week, I actually do check out the releases by like um boy groups and stuff. Yeah, shout out to you for putting a boy group on there. Nice man. But uh. It came out in. Shout out to Google. <laughs> no free sponsors, but shout out to Google. <laughs> shout out to Google. Um, it came out on their All Light album in January sixteenth, twenty nineteen. So oh, so it was a fresh one. It was a fresh one. Fresh yes. one in two thousand nineteen. Well, I will have to re-listen to this episode so I can hear the clip we're gonna play. But that's yeah, a good, we'll, have, we'll have short clips for all of our songs. That's a, this out like. that's a good that's a good number five, man. That's I don't good. really have much to say about it because I don't really know anything about Astro or uh, really boy groups in general. But uh, you just like the song. I like the song. It's really good. It's really catchy. I the vocal melodies are really good. It's a really good song. All right, I'm down now, with uh, it, man. I'm down with it. What is your number five? My number five is a solo artist and it's birthday oh. by Somi. Was, we all were really looking forward to Somi's debut. And I feel like some people weren't really too stoked on Birthday. And were like, oh, that didn't fit her, blah, 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 all this stuff. But I loved Birthday. I thought it was I thought it was amazing. I thought it fit her vibe perfectly with how colorful and fun it is. And I think it was just waiting for her so long. I was just so excited to finally see Somi doing something that was like all her own. So... Uh, I was I was really about birthday. I thought it was a really good song. You know what's really weird that you say that? Because uh, the last song I actually listened to on my shuffle before I uh, came in here to record this was Birthday by Somi. Perfect, man. That's uh, awesome. I don't know why. Whenever I hear it, it always reminds me of something I would have heard from like uh, the, the Taylor Swift era when she made like Shake It Off and stuff. Yeah. I don't know why. But like just this, the vibe of the song and like the beat, it just reminds me of like that type of song. I can totally, I totally see that, and I love "Shake It Off" and that album from Taylor Swift and all of that kind of like super catchy, sassy girl pop music. I it's like my favorite thing. So, and I just think that fits Somi so perfectly. I thought it was a perfect vibe for her to sing to. So I, 
I got to put birthday at my number five spot. It's a good pick. All right, number four, back to you. Uh, my number four actually coincides with the members I'm trying to remember now, and it's not working because it's uh, Solid. Boogie Up by Cosmic Girl. Great song. Good song. Uh, yeah, it's, like I said, I've, last week, I'm trying to remember their names. I think I know, like, three-fourths of them. I definitely know, like, five or six of them. Uh, but it's just a really good summer song, really upbeat, really catchy. The girls all look really good in the music video. The music video is really cool. And honestly, that's uh, the only reason why I like Cosmic Girls, because of Boogie Up. If it wasn't for that, then I wouldn't really let me into them. I really liked... I really like the summer music videos where the groups are just at the beach, at the pool, having fun, like hitting beach balls, or just literally having fun. That's like the theme of the video, and that's exactly what Boogie Up was, pretty much. They're just like running around on the beach and like taking pictures, and everyone's smiling, and everyone's happy. So I I really loved the video. I thought the video was super dope, and the song was just perfect for summertime. Yeah, there's been a couple songs by him that I've, like, liked, but I wasn't, like, super high on. Like, I wouldn't, like, listen to them on my own free time. But if they, like, came on, you know, I'd, like, let it play. But uh, Boogie Up definitely is a really good song. Really it, liked it. It is a good one. I feel kind of the same for me that that is one of the first Cosmic Girls songs that really kind of stuck, I guess. And I really paid attention to it more. I also really like the choreography of the dance, especially the very beginning. It's, like, really just fun and arms flailing and it's it's a good song yeah it's summer it's like perfect song for summer now what would your number four be all right my four i this one's like big time recency bias like literally a week ago but i i just love i love dumb liddy by card That oh, yeah. is that is probably my favorite type of music, just the super heavy trap like beats and super loud vocals, super loud instru- instrumentation. I don't even know if that's a word, but all that stuff. I I love it's that a song. Word here. I it's a word here, man. It's, it's a safe space. You can say whatever <laughs> you want. <laughs> it's true. But I love the video. They all look super good. They all sound super good. They all look super tough and scary, and I, I don't know. I love Dumb Liddy. It's it literally is like a lit song, and the vibe of it is just so. It gets me hyped every time I listen to it or every time I watch the video. So, I wish that was our uh, run out music for basketball. Seriously, like I, I feel so like hyped. yeah, I like any sporting event. I would get so hyped to go play. I want to be a wrestler and come out to Dumb Liddy and go fight someone, hit someone in the head with a chair in the ring but it, it just gets me so pumped up and i love i really love too when girls like rap to that kind of music because you know it's like i don't know it's kind of just like a different position for the girls to sing to that type of music but like i just think that's really cool and joseph and bm too and bm's like the most swole guy in the whole world but i i love dumb lady it's it's my number four i'm with you great pick great pick all right we're about to hit the halfway mark, man. Number three, who you got? My number three is uh, going to be Me by CLC.
They had a lot of comebacks. Good pick. This year so far. Blessed. But uh Yeah, seriously, blessed. <laughs> but uh out of all of them so far, I really liked me. I just like the hardcore bass drop. Yin just comes in killing raps all the time. The dance was great, the outfits were great. Everyone looked so good and it was just I'm can't believe they didn't win any awards for that, but what are you gonna do? They have won a lot of awards for a lot of their songs. Honestly, it's a travesty that they couldn't win just one show for me because that song it, it was so good. It was so good. I think it's it's up there with maybe my favorite CLC song. It's tough because Black Dress was so so amazing. But I, I think me is right up there. I think it's just a concept that suits them really well, just the kind of like dark, super hardcore, you know, like powerful female. Yeah, they're don't super, take crap from anybody. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly it, and that fits CLC so well. They've been killing that concept over their last few comebacks. So I think I think me I think I love that song too. That's a that's a really good pick. Also, sad to see Ian's short blonde hair go. That was a Great look for her. Bless up Man. to the stylist, whoever died and cut her hair because it was flawless. Our rapper Yan 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 was just absolutely rocking that hair, and it was it was perfect. Also, going back to our K-pop lives right now, kind of sad because promotions for Devil ended. But hopefully, that just means they'll get another comeback before the end of the year. Yeah, Throw that in there real fast. Cube's been doing them pretty well lately, so. I feel like we should be optimistic about CLC coming back in the winter. Hopefully they can get on some variety shows before the end of the year, too. Cause... Seriously, man. They're so good on there, and I feel that they need some more time on variety shows. Even when they do their comebacks, they maybe do one here or there, but I feel like they just need to keep going because they're so funny. Okay, well, enough about my favorite group because I'm going to have That was just a good pick. One can, day. I, I had a lot to say about that, too, because I love that song. Um, One day I'll just do an entire episode about. Yeah, CLC. we'll just do a CLC episode. But um, what's your my number my number three? My number three is a really basic bitch pick. Um, <laughs> Here we go. I, I I honestly went between maybe picking this song to not picking it to putting it on my honorable mention, but I decided that I do listen to it enough that it needs to be on my list, and it's "Kill This Love" you by Black. A lot of people, kind of like Somi, said that this was not, you know, Blackpink's best stuff, which maybe can be true, but I still just love, kind of like I said earlier about Card, the hardcore rapping with the beats and the girls just getting it and being super intense and super powerful and looking super, super cool and just having those over-the-top sets, those over-the-top, you know, just beats and lyrics and everything. I, it's fit Blackpink because that's what they do, but I just, I still really love that song and I listen to it all the time. Although it's not my favorite Blackpink song, like there's nothing wrong with it. It's a good Blackpink song, but yeah. it was really, really sweet live. Yeah. It was, it was awesome live. Yeah, you got to see it. I remember watching the video and being super shook because that was the current song they were promoting while they were on the In Your Area tour and. The what you sent it almost sounded they had like a live band in the back playing it too, like guitars and drums. Oh and yeah, stuff. they had like an entire band, like traveling band with them playing music and stuff, and it was like super nice. It was crazy. It just made it that much heavier and just the beat drops that much louder, and it's just I love that's like my favorite type of K-pop is that heavy rap beat drop type of stuff. So I had to go with Blackpink. I wasn't sure, but I had to put them at my number three spot. While we're on the topic of Blackpink Live, uh, if you guys haven't watched Jisoo play Clarity Live, do yourself a favor, go look that up. That was the number one thing I was mad that I missed because I saw... It's the most angelic thing I've ever heard in my whole life. I, I like cried. Yeah, I saw videos on Instagram and I was so excited to see it and then I couldn't go to the concert and I was like, wow, I missed that moment in my life and I will never forgive the people who didn't let me go to this concert. Her voice literally brought tears to my eyes 
I was like, just lost. I was like, wow, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. Hopefully, I mean, I don't know if I'll get that chance, but hopefully I will get to see Blackpink sooner or later because I have yet to see them yet. So shout out to Blackpink. Go on another world world tour. I'm sure they'll be back. They'll be back. They did really well. They did, still a thing. Hopefully. They did really well. So, all right, we're on number two, dude. Go for so, it. So, my number two pick, I hope this is your number two pick, too. I feel it like is, I know uh, where you're going with this. It's a Woo by D.I.A. <laughs> That's not where I was going with it, but that is a good pick. That I freaking is, love that song. That is a really good pick. If number one, if the number one song we both <laughs> like didn't come out, Rua would be number one on my list of the best comebacks. Really? It might be the best song they ever made. I love that song oh, so much. Oh, I think so. I think that's DIA's best song for sure. Also, didn't mention it in our uh, groups we liked last time, like last week, but we both just love DIA. Do it amazing. Always. Do it, do it amazing. It. Um, it's what I wake up to. I think in my head, do it amazing. That's what DIA wants me to do. So I go attack the day because DIA told me to. And I love that song. It's so good. Oh, uh, everybody looks so good. Everything's just so awesome. I don't know. The whole music video, everything's great. Live I, performances. I love the video with them skating. Aren't they in like the skating rink? the roller rink and all the it's crazy lights? Itself. And it's yeah, it's like the retro. <laughs> The retro skating vibe and it suited them really well and like you I said, love the dance all the members are just really really gorgeous human beings i wish they would come back that was a really long time ago that we was out so they need yeah. to come back so whatever mbk or i don't know what their company is but they need to come back because they're they were super supposed good. to have a comeback but they didn't i don't know what's going on yeah i don't know what what's up with that but they also are supposed to not be a group anymore, and they're still a group, so... Well, I hope they don't disband, or else I'm going to cry. But yeah, D.I.A., Wuwa, freaking... If it wasn't for the number one song, this it would be number one in my book. Watch the live stages of Wuwa, because they're amazing. They do it uh, amazing for Wuwa. They do. Uh, okay, so I thought we'd be on the same page, but we weren't. So no. what's your number two? My number two is Dala Dala. Because I had to go with... That came out in 2019, right? But that wasn't a comeback. That's a debut. Well, it's still like a release of a song. Does that not, not count? Comeback. No. <laughs> I did not know... I thought we were just doing like songs in general. No, comebacks. 2019 comebacks, man. Oh. There's a bunch of debut songs I could have picked, but I didn't. <laughs> well, I didn't know the rules. Um, because I picked Dollar Dollar by Itzy. Because that song's so freaking awesome. And Itzy is the it best. It is really good. That's probably... That's on my list of top five songs that came out this year. But um, it technically isn't a comeback. Yeah, that's true. I didn't really think about it. I was just thinking of songs that came out in 2019. So I guess we'll just have to dig into the... Asterisk. Put an asterisk by that. Asterisk. Just for a not Dollar Not Dollar Dollar. Shit, I'll just take Wuwa. Why not? Bro, we had the choice. same I one. That's it. crazy. I love DIA. They're the Dude, best. I See, I knew it the whole time. Dude, yes, we have the same one and two. But yeah, once again, everyone go support DIA because they're one of the best sub IOI groups and they're super good. Watch the live stages because they really know how to perform. Oh, yeah, they're great. And but, they all look so good. But okay, before we hit number one, we can go with our multiple honorable mentions. Um, yeah, if you want to go first, you can just list off your honorable mentions. You don't have to like alternate. You can just say some. Okay. Um, okay, well, since Wua moved into my number two spot, <laughs> well, one of my honorable mentions that I had was Me by CLC. That was, <laughs> I mean, that was right there near the top. Maybe not top five, but it was like number six because me, we already talked about it. It was so good. And then another solo artist that I love was Chung Ah. She had Gotta Go, which I feel that that song was a different vibe for her. It was a little more dark, a little more heavy. 
but it really suited her well. Um, I really, really liked it, and the video was really, really like art, artsy and artistic, and Chung Ha is such an amazing dancer. She can make anything cool, so Gotta Go by Chung Ha is my other honorable mention. What were yours? My first honorable mention is one you already mentioned earlier, uh, Dumb Liddy. Yes. It's a great song. We already talked about that, too, but that's going to be my honorable mention, one of my first honorable mention ones. Um, I feel like maybe if it came out a little earlier and had a little more time to stew on it, it kind of yeah might have been higher, but these other songs have been out for a while, so I've been listening to them for a long time. Yeah. Um, and my next honorable mention is uh, Fun by Promise Night. Good pick. Yep, that was a good pick. If I had more honorable mentions, that would have been on there too. I really liked. Um, I really liked that song. It's just, you know, sometimes you know you really like a song, but they just get pushed down the the barrel because there's just so many other good songs on top of them. And the thing is, there's so many other good songs by that group, and I feel that fun was maybe not quite as good as love bomb because love bomb is like arguably the okay, best love song bomb. ever like if that came out this year that would maybe be my number one song but it was just hard for them to beat love bomb so fun was maybe a little less but it's still incredible and such a good a good concept for them the music video was so funny with all the different brands, uh, ways yeah. that they like went over the brands and replaced it with their own names and stuff yeah man it was such a great song but Honestly, if I had to pick, there'd be like the number one song and then a bunch of songs tied for number two, and that would be like the top five. Yeah, but, I know. I just don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. No, I mean, No by CLC was on my radar too because that was a really good song. I I was really impressed with CLC this year. They were really, really freaking good. I love CLC, and I love all their songs. So, I mean, the fact that I have two songs above me should really tell you how good these other two songs are. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a fact. But, I mean... Speaking of a... Uh, CLC comebacks, though, I guess since we're doing honorable mentions and stuff, is there any, like, B-sides or anything you want to shout out before we move on to our number one? That's a good question. Because I want to just shout out the rest it. of the you album go. from No. Cause oh, so good. I think, uh, well, now I can't think of what it is off the top of my head, but all the songs on the album are really good. Oh, Show. I think Show's the best song that's on that entire album. They would have promoted that. It would have been, I think they, well, I mean, they did win awards, but... I think Show would have won him a lot of awards. It was such a good song. No one multiple awards, right? Like multiple. Yeah. I think show. it won. I think it won two or three. But was that their first win of all time on a show? Yes. And then, but then they came back with me, and me didn't win anything. They haven't won anything since. That's um, crazy. I just can't believe me didn't win. That song was incredible. I also can't believe Devil didn't win for all the hype and all the praise that it got, and it still didn't win any awards. Yeah, I. Devil, um, Devil was really good. It wasn't my favorite, but it was still really solid, and it seemed like people really were giving it a lot of love online. So you thought oh, yeah, that might have was, turned into like a, a a win somewhere, but they were uh, even I guess still not. charting on like they stopped promotions and they're still charting on like music rankings and stuff. So I mean, I'm not sure it's crazy how it works. But, yeah, uh, it's I'll, tough. It's tough. But yeah, listen to a uh, show and like it off a. Uh, the no album. So oh, like it's like it's super good. Like it's either really, one of those really songs good. on that album or any of their other albums they had would probably be the best song on their album. Like that whole album's so good. Yeah, from, it's from solid. and the artwork on the album is really cool. It's a very like really artsy, well put together album. But all right, let's let's go to number one and just say what it is because we are in unison here on this decision of our number one comeback of the year so far. And dude, what what song is that? Uh, it's gonna be uh, "Fancy" by Twice. Best song made in the history of music. Yeah, this is no, I mean, no matter how much I love the other songs, it's hard to top Fancy. Fancy was so good. Fancy is the reason that Twice is my favorite K-pop group in the world ever now because of that. And after seeing it live, too, at Twice Lights, 
I was a, just a changed person. Everything about Fancy is the best thing ever. The outfits, the music video, the stage performances, all their stage performances, all the different outfits. I especially love the one within like their little suits. Great. One, um, multiple times when we hang out or when we've hung out before, we've literally stayed up till like three, four in the morning just watching Fancy stages. Just like repeatedly, just like, all right, on to the next stage, on to the next stage, and just watch them perform like 15 hours. times in a row because, and then watch the music video like 10 times because it's just that addicting and that good. And I think it's twice does a good job with it, but I think it's really a song too that every member gets their own awesome amount of shine in it. So it's just a whole nother reason to fall in love with them. It's fancy is the best. I, I will always love fancy. Fancy is the best. Not just the best comeback of the year, the best song ever. I know, when we actually do like an end of the year songs award, it's not going to be a surprise if Fancy is just right back up at the top because I just don't see anything passing it. Yeah, it would take a lot for something to pass Fancy. And I thought about putting Feel Special on my comebacks list, but I figured since I put you dumb, which I put Dumb Liddy on there already. I didn't want to have too much recency bias, so Feel Special, amazing album, but I couldn't put that on any list right now just because it just came out. So got to let it got to let it grow there for a little bit. Throw that in the honorable mention category. Yeah, it can just be an honorable mention too. Feel Special by Twice because it's, it's also incredible. But there you have it. Top five comebacks. Top five comebacks of the year. I didn't even know the rules, and I put Dalla Dalla. Shout out Dalla Dalla for being a really awesome song probably i mean we could do a whole debut video but that's definitely near the top of my favorite debuts of the year oh easily i honestly that's like maybe top three best songs of the i year. mean itsy kicks ass they're awesome yeah dollar dollar is really good and they just are a juggernaut out there on the uh the music performance circuit, just winning awards left and right. Oh, so many. So many. They won so many times for Dollar Dollar. It was crazy. They they had to set kind of set some kind of record or something. I don't know. Also, Icy was really good, too. I thought about putting that in. That would have been a good one for honorable mention since that actually was a comeback. But yeah, I thought Icy, I thought was, Icy was really solid. I, I didn't like it as... More than Dalla Dalla. It was maybe right below it, but I still thought Icy was really, really good. Icy was really good. The music video for Icy was really good, too. Yeah, and their their performance for it was really solid. And they won a bunch of awards for that. Yeah, they're just so popular, man. I can't wait to see them in a while. Yeah. But Hopefully we can see them next year. Hopefully we can see them next year. It'll be really awesome to see Itzy. But but I think that... Uh, I think that kind of does it for episode number two man we did it we had our top five comebacks it's true a good list both of us have pretty good list i mean i'm actually really surprised that uh i don't know except for number one i don't think any of ours were the same no i'm I, i'm i'm surprised too i thought we'd honestly have like at least two maybe even three of similar songs or the same but i'm glad we didn't i'm glad we didn't um no red velvet on my list or your list I feel like they, they've been okay lately, but maybe not quite top five material. So hopefully, SM can I mean, get Red Velvet just, back on track just a little bit. Just to show you that uh, even though we talk about K-pop all the time and everything, it's just everyone has their own opinions. It's true. It's true. And also, I was looking at the list of comebacks from this year. There were so many songs I had no idea what they were. So from now on, I'm gonna try and listen more to. I mean. It'd be tough to listen to everybody, but I'm going to try to pay attention more to comebacks and just at least, like, listen once to be like, hey, this is good, or this isn't good, or this isn't my favorite, so... Because there was just so many people that have came back so far in 2019. Oh, yeah, it's not even over. There's still uh, more comebacks coming, so one that I'm super excited for is Super Juniors coming back for the first time. Yes. With all their available members. I think there's only eight of them right now? Eight or nine, right? I think eight. I'm not 100% sure, though. But I know all the members that are currently available for promoting and doing stuff, even He Chol, are uh, going to be promoting this new song that we got coming out here in a couple of days, and I'm super excited for it. It's going to be sick. Maybe at the year-end, Top 5 Super Junior will be up there. 
Yeah, we didn't mention it last week since we really just talked about girl groups that we're into, but my favorite male group is Super Junior. I love Super Junior. We can also talk we can ones. we can talk about uh guys next week maybe. Maybe that can be our next week uh topic is the boy groups that we're into. Cuz uh it would be perfect cuz Big Bang's going to be back here in a little bit. I do love Big Bang. I do love Big That's all I'm going to say about it right now. I but I do love Big Bang. They have very very good music that I love. There's a reason they are renowned worldwide. It's true. It's true. You cannot with everything going on, you cannot you know, fight the fact that they are a huge reason K-pop is as big as it is. But yeah, so I feel like that was a pretty good episode. Yeah, I think that was solid too. Just got the the word out about some of our favorite songs. Everyone, go listen to those songs. Go support the groups. Go support the groups you like. Tell us about the groups that you like. Um, yeah, if you guys or, have any recommendations or songs you want to listen to, just shoot us the message. Shoot us check some them out. messages. Our Instagram is kpop kimchi 101 we have a bunch of pics on there we'll put this episode on there go hit us up on there our twitter is also kpop kimchi podcast i think um it's kind of slow to get going but the episodes will be there follow us send us messages what's your what's your social media you want people to the to follow you dude uh my instagram is fog raw t-o-h-b f-o-g-r-a-w-t-o-h-b and that's literally the only social media I have. So He's always on it, too. He's always on Instagram. We said it last week, but he is always on Instagram. It may not look like it, but I'm always there. So if you shoot me a message, I'll answer you back. Awesome. Awesome. My Instagram is probably my main social media, too. It's just Justin with T-O-H-B. Oh, Justin T-O-H-B as well. Kind of like, kind of like yours. But uh, I think that does it, man. I think that does it for episode number two. Well, here, I got something uh, fun we can do. Okay, let's do it. To end the show. So, perfect, perfect. Last week, we talked about recommendations we give people. Yes. So this week, we can do a different segment. Okay. And we can I'm excited. let I don't the know people what this is. know a little more about ourselves. Okay, and, go. Well, I was going to say, we can give them something that we're interested in outside of the world of K-pop. Like, yeah. some interest that we have, you know? Go for it. Uh, like, for instance, I'm super into Magic the Gathering. I play a lot of Magic and I had yes. some crazy games. Recently, I've got some new cards to make my decks more competitive. I play a lot of Commander, which is a format in Magic, to prepare for this uh, Command Fest that's coming up here in about a month. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be an exciting three-day tournament weekend. Uh, uh, what about you? What's something you're interested in outside of K-pop? I was going to say to the people, if you like Magic, then that's more of a reason to talk to Brian because he's in. That's, that's literally he's, my entire life. K-pop magic. There you go. So hit him up. He knows everything about it. He's the best. So talk to him all about that. Um, huh, I don't know. A little bit put on the spot. I don't know. I like sports. Sports are pretty cool. I like watching football. It's football season. Yeah, just football season. We both are in a fantasy football. Yeah, league you together. won this week. You beat me this week. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm, dude. I'm so surprised. I really didn't think I was going to. I don't know. It was a it was a good it was a good fair it was a good fair match. But yeah, I I don't know. I like sports. Just just someone hit me up on social media and then we'll talk and figure out what my other my interests are. But um I kid you not, every time we're matched up against each other in fantasy football, our like expected points total is always like exactly the same. Yeah, we're always so similar, so always always so close to just you know, it like literally says guy, a tie. It literally says a tie. Yeah, one guy like makes it or breaks it for both of us, but it's always really even. It's kind of crazy to be when you think about it. It really is. It really is. So we'll have to see next time we played like a month or so if it's if it's like that again. But yeah, you want to talk about uh, magic? You can contact me. You want to talk about uh, sports? You can talk to Justin. Or I guess you can really talk to me too. I watch a lot of sports too. So, uh, Do you talk about? But, you can talk about whatever you guys want. Because we're open ears all the time. And by that, I mean K-pop. Talk to me about K-pop all the time. That's what, it's what we love, man. It's what we love. But, all right. I think that was a good second episode. I feel like we did a good job. I feel like we did, too. But um, until next, next time, week. next week on Thursday, I'm Justin. He's Brian. I'm this Brian. is He's Brian. This is the K-pop Kimchi Podcast. And we'll see you later. Peace. Peace.